right, so how do we play it? Uh, first, I'll tell you that you know the tuning that I'm in: F sharp, D, G, A, D. And I'm tuned all the way up. Normally, if I'm going to sing this song, I have to tune way down to F or maybe even E, um, way down uh, to where I can actually sing the song. And you'll notice I was playing that overhand, and you, I imagine you've never seen me play the song overhand before because I never have. This is the first time I sat down and tried to figure it out in the overhand or claw hammer style, and I think that's what most of you are, are more familiar with, so I'm going to try to teach it to you that way. Now the reason I'm doing that is because the two finger picking pattern that I came up with to play that is really pretty tricky. Um, and you know, briefly I'll explain why it, it is so tricky. The reason being is that I learned this song from George Gibson when I was a kid. George played it for me on a six string banjo using three fingers. And, uh, and so he, he was doing sort of double time with his right hand to get the kind of jukey sound that you hear in the song. Well, I couldn't, I, I didn't have a six string banjo and I don't play with three fingers. So when I came home and tried to figure this song out for myself later on, I had to work it out on using just five strings and just two fingers. And so consequently for me, uh, as often happens if I'm trying to play after a three finger picker like Doc Boggs or George Gibson, if I'm trying to figure that out, uh, I, I can't get all the sounds out of my right hand. So I get the sounds from the third finger that they, they use three fingers on their right hand. I use two fingers on my right hand and then my, there's more left hand activity. I'm doing open string pull offs up here to get that third string sound, the third finger sound. So that's why my two finger picking, especially on this song in particular, is really unusual. Other thing you'll notice is I'm, I, besides using a lot of open string pull offs and a real syncopated right hand technique in the song, I'm doing very heavy, uh, what you can call, what people call bends or chokes, or even I've heard it called a slur up here. That's where you note the string and you bend it across the fret. To me, just that is important in the song because it adds a lot of the sort of spooky, bluesy uh, flavor to it, I think. Um, so there's that. There's the reason behind that. I also want to give you a little bit of history on the song. Uh, as far as we can tell, it is based on a very a much earlier ballad called The Texas Rangers, and you can look that up. Texas Rangers was a song that was commonly sung and, and played. In, in southeastern Kentucky and probably throughout southern Appalachia. And it's, it seems to be an example of a song that was composed out west um, as early as the 1830s and, and made its way back, um, back east to the mountains where it, was, it remained popular even after it fell out of favor elsewhere. And if you ask me, just the way that the, sound song, uh, the, way that the song sounds, um, some of the elements that are in it, to me sound like uh, even earlier English ballads, so it was probably uh, based on an even earlier song whenever it was composed in the 1830s. So um, there was a, a, a famous uh, fight that happened in the 1830s between the Texas Rangers and uh, a group of Native Americans, I think they were, I think they were Comanches. And the, the natives basically uh, had the, the, the rangers heavily outnumbered and would have killed them all probably, except the rangers had those brand new five-shot Colt revolvers. And they worked. And they were able to, to actually defeat the natives in that engagement, a small number of, uh, of rangers against a, a much larger group of, of native warriors, apparently. That's my understanding of, of the history behind the song Texas Rangers. Uh, I, I think that's accurate to the best of my knowledge. So, uh, and during the Second World War, immediately after the Second World War, people, uh, banjoists who had served in World War I and were familiar with Texas Rangers, they uh, came back to the mountains and they started singing this song after World War I, um, and they called it German War. By the time George heard the song in the early 1950s, well, we'd already been through the Second World War, so the way people differentiated between Second World War and the First World War was that the Second World War was, you know, the current German War, and the First World War was known as the Old German War. So George calls the song Old German War, and that's, that's how they, they called it back in 
when he was coming up in, uh, in East Kentucky, as far as I know. I just simplify it and call it German War, because to me, it's just a war song. It doesn't matter which, which world war it's about. Okay. And uh, so let's let's jump into it. Uh, we've got our banjo tuned to F sharp D G A D. The way that the, the the chord that you hold throughout most of the song is just you take your index finger on your left hand and note the third string at the second fret. And that gives you that chord as opposed to open. And you are going to go fully open at least at one point, but throughout most of the song I'm holding my index finger on the third string at the second fret. Um, the other positions is your, your middle finger comes down on the bass string at the third fret. And then your ring finger does a lot of work on the uh, first and second strings. Your ring finger will just, it's all across on the third fret. Your ring finger will note the second string at the third fret, and it'll note the first string at the third fret, um, just like one time. So that's the sounds you get. Okay, and the way that you start the song out is on the on the bass string noted um, at the third fret, and then go open. And then note it again. Then quickly come down and note the second string open. And then you're going to note the second string at the third fret. And then play the second string open. So that's how you get the first run. Now we're going to note the second string again at the same fret. And then the first string open. And then back to the second string, note it again the second string open. Now the third string open. And then go back and take your middle finger to the third to the bass string at the third fret. Then the bass string open. So that gives you that that opening run. second string open, then note the second string, then the second string open again, then note it again, and then the first string open, and then the first string noted, then the first string open, and then back to the second string noted, first string open, second string noted, second string open, then the, the third string open, then the bass string noted, and the bass string open. Okay, so it's just not an easy song, but so how that high part goes is. times here and we're going to do close-ups later of my hands. piece but you know uh, if you have trouble with it just holler at me and let me know and I'll, I'll keep going over it um, and also remember if you learn you learn this if you learn German war then southern uh, not southern Texas but Texas Rangers Texas Rangers is the same melody 
and it's just old 1830s cowboy lyrics. So if you learn this one very complicated song, relatively complicated song, um, you're learning, you're basically learning two tunes and you can, you can sing the words to German War to it or you can sing the old 1830s cowboy ballad to it. So it's kind of worth it, right? Um, all right, that's all the time I really should, should go into this. Um, please respond, let me know how that was for you and look out for the, the close-ups. All right, thanks for looking.